Hey, what's up guys? This is Michael Spanishiwa Yibut for Hotkit.com. Today we've got some ZVZs for you on the map Shakuras Plateau. It's going to be mainly focusing on what I call the Ice Fisher style, which is a very, very heavily delayed gas style. Uh, ideally, we're going to be delaying the gas until like 40 supply or possibly even later. Um, it's, it's pretty popular a few months ago, or I mean it was popular a few months ago. It's not really in fashion anymore. It's kind of one of those like uh, builds of the month kind of things. But we're gonna go over the build just because recently I've I've seen it and kind of kind of sparked some new interest in me. So we can see here I'm spawning in the t bottom left as Zerg. I main Zerg so I'll be playing Zerg in, in probably all of my videos. You send out that overlord, your initial overlord, to the right. You can see here. It's just uh, the closest base, so you'll be able to see either the creep or his overlord. Because I haven't seen his overlord yet, this tells me that he's not spawning in this location right here. This early drone scout also tells me one of two things. Um, like. 90% of the time if they're gonna scout this early it's because they're going hatchery first but it's also possible he's doing some crazy like six pool although if he were he probably wouldn't have pulled back the drone but either way I'm I saw that early drone scout and I figured if he's going hatch first well I'll just do a gas pool that way I'll be completely safe on the off chance that he does go an early pool and then if he didn't do an early pool because he nine scouted or you know scouted with the drone that early I feel like economically wise I won't be too far behind just because 14-14 is relatively even with a hatch first it's slightly behind but because of that early drone scout I feel like whatever advantage he would have had he, he's not going to have okay uh, this first overlord I saw the no creep so I immediately shifted its direction you can either send it here to try and see behind the mineral line and like poke in and see the drone saturation and things like that or you can send it to the front of the base just to see you know unit counts and how many zerglings are heading out and things like that uh, back in my base here we see I went for this the 14 14 like I said which is basically just a 14 extractor and then 14 spawning pool so you get the 9 overlord you drone to 14 get an extractor then you drone again and get the spawning pool you'll be droning to 15 and then you get the should be getting the overlord well I um, guess I'm too high supply for that <laughs> should have mentioned it a bit sooner but yeah you get the 15 overlord and then ideally you'll be getting this hatchery at 20 supply you'll actually uh, not build a zergling with that that larva that you'll be saving but just because uh, the way this game's been playing out I decided to take a little greedier 21 hatchery Here we see Ling's engaging drones here. I managed to pick one off and I'm just kind of dancing around because I know this spine crawler isn't up yet. My my zergling speed's gonna be for my opponents because I know uh, he went hatchery first. And I actually lose two drone or two zerglings there, and all of my links here are heavily damaged. I did manage to pick off two drones, so it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but ideally you want to keep all six of your zerglings alive. This is just so that if he decides to poke out with slowlings, you're able to reproduce some zerglings at your base. Here I have to run into his base just to see the drone saturation and whether or not he's taking his gas, and possibly even pick off another drone here, which I'm able to do. So it, it's three drones for six zerglings. In the units lost tab, it's it's not too terrible. They We've both lost 150, except I've lost military units and he's lost economy units. So it, it actually ends up working out in my favor. We have the overlord spread here. Um, this is just so that you know I see whether or not he's moving out. I scouted the no gas, and he's actually poking in with his overlord here to scout my drone saturation, like I was talking about before. And uh, this this is actually useful information for him because it, it tells him whether or not I'm going units, whether or not I'm you know doing some crazy all in or going heavy economy, maybe a third hatchery before you know before layer or something like that. Um, as you can see here, I opted for roaches. I'm going to attempt to do a roachling timing. I feel like I have the economic advantage, and because of that, 
uh, I should be able to just produce units and overrun my opponent. Or that's the idea. Uh, I did scout the spine crawler, but I figured you know, it's possible he might have cancelled it, and it's also possible that he might feel overly safe because he has spine crawlers and just cut unit production entirely. So I'm hoping this uh, this kind of strategy here, where I go for the roaches and then I clean out any banelings that he does have, and then I'll use his zerglings to swarm in. But I actually get to the top of the ramp here, and I see a ton of spines, a really nice wall off, and. Uh, it's actually really bad for me. I try to force the issue because I, I see the spine crawlers building. I figure if I ever have a chance, that would be it. But the defense is just too strong at this point. Uh, so you'll see I'm not actually the player going for the Ice Fisher build. I've actually just done the standard 14 14 with the speed and expand. And my opponent here is doing this gasless style. Uh, I scouted earlier that he had no gases and. Well, it kind of cons confirmed my suspicions that he was going Ice Fisher. You see he has no speed on his Zergling, so he doesn't even have gas for that. And I'm going to actually pause it here. He does have a Roach Warren, but if you look at his vision, he actually doesn't even have the gases for it. So this is actually just a fake Roach Warren to, uh, to make me think that he took his gases sooner than, than normal. But it also serves uh, a double purpose in the sense that he's walling off with the Roach Warren that he's going to have to build anyway. Like if he had walled off with three Evo Chambers, that third Evo Chamber would be kind of superfluous. But by having this third or this third building that's uh, Roach Warren, it actually serves a purpose later on in the game. Uh, here, I switched over from unit production to drones because. I see the front and I know I'm not going to be able to break that. He's got like three six spine crawlers, the slowlings and the queens to block, as well as a really nice ramp to defend. So at this point I just have to kind of hope that I can contain my opponent, but unfortunately uh, the containing isn't going to work so well. Like yes, I will be able to hold him at the ramp for now, but I really don't have a third base or any kind of economic advantage behind me. So this is just... Like, it's true I'm containing him, but th there's no power behind the contain. It's actually just, you know, these Zerglings might as well be anywhere else. But the fact that they're Zerglings and not drones really hurts me right now. Uh, regardless, I'm going to be taking my third base because I do have map control. So if there's ever a way to come back in a game, it's to, to take advantage of whatever, whatever you do have. And right now, I might be behind in Harvesters, but I am ahead in the sense that I have map control. Just poking up at the front here to see uh, whether or not the evolution chambers are producing. You can actually see uh, they kind of dance a little. Uh, they like vibrate, and uh, that that way you can tell if they're they're producing. And you can also see that on the roach warren as well, which will tell you his layer timing and whether or not he has a layer. My overlord spread. I just have it mo mostly around his base. I want to have visions that you know there's no sneaky attacks or run bys or anything like that. Uh, back at home here, I scouted the double evolution chamber, so I went for a single evolution chamber of my of my own, and you can see it's upgrading right now. And here I scout him moving to the bottom of this ramp. I don't know if he's sharking around, but I do know he doesn't have zergling speed yet, so I should be... And okay, we see the two drones head out. I immediately pick off one. I figured it was for an expansion down here, but I also see the second drone going to the top, so it was going to be a double expand. Now this tells me, I'm going to pause it here, and I'm, this tells me probably two things. Because of the unit count that I see right now, and the fact that he has no speed on his zerglings, and the fact that he went for the double expand, I'm thinking he probably droned really heavily behind this, something like 50 to 60 drones. Unfortunately, I don't have an overlord positioned here to check his drone saturation, but that's what I'm thinking. Uh, the only reason why he would delay his gas so much, and, and uh, like basically by delaying the gas so much, you're having a really, really high economy because all of your drones are on minerals. And, you know, the more drones you have on minerals, the more mineral income you have, and in turn, the more drones you can build with those minerals. And so it's just this really compounding, compounding factor where you end up with a ton of drones, and then later on you can take all of your gases at once. And this is what I'm thinking my opponent did because, uh, you know, the only reason he would take two hatcheries is if he needs the larva. And, you know, because he's going roach heavy, you know, roaches are very efficient on larva. Just because, you know, Zerglings, it's 50 minerals for one larva, but with Roaches, it's 75 minerals and 25 gas for one larva, which is uh, essentially double the resources, so they're extremely efficient. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that 
and and the fact that he got the double double evolution chambers um i'm thinking he's going to go really roach heavy with a lot of upgrades and so he's he's not going to need the larva from a macro hatchery uh, if that makes sense so both of these both of these hatcheries are going to be fully operational mining bases and so yeah that that tells me that i'm really behind in the drone count Uh, the fact that he has no speed also means he's going to be super defensive and the only reason you'd want to be super defensive is if you're trying to defend an economic advantage or something like that which is which also confirms my, my point that he's going for lots of lots of drones I actually do a run by here I figured I needed to do something crazy to get back in this game but unfortunately my opponent was uh, was pretty prepared here and just got the full drone surround. And it was actually really, really bad for me. You, you can see the units lost tab that I'm really falling far behind. Uh, behind this, I was macroing though. I do have a bunch of roaches. My plus one is about to finish, and uh, but he has the upgrade advantage. He has he had the two evolution chambers sooner than me, and so he's going to have plus one carapace over my my plus zero carapace. Uh, plus one attack on roaches basically means that I'll be able to two hit his zerglings as opposed to three hit. It's a lot the same as uh, as zealots, except roaches do it in one attack and zealots do it in two. And here I'll pause and explain that. What I mean is zealots they attack with eight damage, but times two. So with a base armor of one, uh, it it affects armor affects zealots a lot more than would roaches. But with roaches it attacks with sixteen damage, but with one attack. So that means, like, you know, if he has one armor, I'll be doing 15 damage, but as opposed to a zealot who's doing 8 damage times 2 in a single attack, it's going to be doing 14 damage because the armor actually reduces each individual attack. So that means uh, roaches will be two hitting zerglings, like, like, like we were talking about. Uh, it, it's pretty big because two hitting as opposed to three hitting, you know, that's efficiency wise, it's a lot more efficient. You're going to be able to clean out a lot more zerglings. Uh, we, we still see he does not have zergling speed, so it looks like he's not going to be very zergling heavy at all. Um, I do have a, a small group of zerglings here. I'm hoping to either get the flank and get a nice surround, or I'll be maybe pick off a base, maybe pick off a base up here, or maybe try and do another run by. Although, you know, we saw before that the run by really wasn't too effective. But I'm just trying to use the mobility that I do have because I have zergling speed and my opponent doesn't to try and get an advantage because really I'm really far behind at this point so I'm just trying to find whatever advantage I can get. We'll see my opponent actually has uh, roach speed and I do not. You can tell because of the uh, the movement speed difference and uh, my roach speed is, is not even close to being done. It's at, you know still still way way off so it's not going to play a role in this fight these lings here are just trying to distract my opponent just trying to make him pull back and pull forward and maybe get a weakness so that I can move in with my roaches here and attack his third or or something but at this point I feel like it's it's probably going to end really poorly for me just because the su supply account wise I'm way too far behind. It was it was a unit efficiency kind of thing where I you know. So I just get surrounded here on both sides and he has overwhelming numbers so I'll probably call the GG at any moment. Uh, I haven't GG'd yet just because he's played really defensive so far so it's possible that my opponent might not attack me and he'll give me like another 5-10 minutes to macro up so but yeah he, he decides to attack which is the right move in this situation so yeah uh, you some people might say that you know I should have GG'd out a little sooner but Really, if your opponent can make mistakes, you should you should give him the opportunity to make those mistakes. Like I could have GG'd out and I would have lost, 
or I could have stayed those extra 10 to 15 seconds and it's possible he might not have pushed out. He, he might have thought to himself, well, I don't have a Zergling speed. I just did a lot of damage. Maybe I'll just get even further ahead by taking like a fifth or sixth base. But, you know, and, and in that situation, I might be able to come back, which is, uh, which is better than losing. Like, a uh, possibility to come back is definitely better than just losing outright. Uh, as it turns out, he did make the right decision and attacked, but, you know, you just want to give your opponent the opportunity to make those mistakes. So I'm actually going to go back in this replay and uh, just go over some highlights here. Uh, mostly from my opponent's point of view, just because he's the one doing the Ice Fisher build and not me. You saw it, it is effective, you know, I, I played against it, I'm, I'm familiar with it, like uh, a lot of people say I pioneered the build myself, so uh, if, if it caught me off guard then it can definitely, definitely have some potential somewhere. Uh, you'll see here he went, he went for the, he actually went for a nine scout or a nine drone scout or something really early. You'll see uh, the drone scout is already on its way. Uh, this is just so that if your opponent's going hatch first or if your opponent's going like a really early pool, you'll be able to see it. Um, there's there's a lot of controversy over it. Uh, a lot of the top pros, like great majority, uh, they do say that you shouldn't drone scout in ZVZ. Uh, you'll never see a drone scout in the Korean server. And, you know, in a lot of top level replays, you'll never see a drone scout either. Just because they think the, the mining time lost is just way too much. And uh, it makes sense. You'll, you'll actually be a lot further behind if you drone scout than if you didn't. For example, if you did drone scout and you scout a six pool, well, then what happens? You know a six pool is coming, but because this drone hasn't been mining, you know, your spawning pool is going to be delayed. You're going to have less drones to fight off that six pool, and you're ultimately you're going to have a, a lot tougher time holding off the six pool than if you hadn't scouted. But, you know, it, if you want to be safe, you should drone scout. Uh, a lot of players, like we see, we saw in Sen against Dark Force in the NASL finals, he didn't drone scout. He did get 10 pooled, but he still held it off, and... Yeah, so, so there you go. It, it it's definitely possible to uh, to hold off things without without the drone scout. And then he went for the the standard 16 hatchery, 15 spawning pool. You'll see he gets the initial spine crawler right off the bat, but at the same time he also over transferred to his natural. This is pretty important. Um, it tells a few things to your opponent that one, you're probably going to be droning really hard, but at the same time it also you're also able to defend your expansion because you have so many drones you can pull off to kill off the initial zerglings like you saw here. Um, he's also getting the two queens really, really quick. This is really important because you need two queens to block off the ramp and also two queens are great against dealing with early game zerglings and banelings. Um, by over transferring to your natural here, uh, it also kind of hides your drone saturation. For example, if I had a, an overlord here and I scouted in, well, I see a bunch of drones, but this doesn't necessarily mean that he has a bunch of drones. Like you'll see he actually over transferred. In his main right here, he only has six drones, and in his, his natural, he has a ton. He has a ton. So I, if I checked here, I might think, oh, wow, he has a ton of drones, but really he, he doesn't. So checking the natural saturation isn't going to be too beneficial for me, which is kind of why I didn't check it this game. I just kind of parked the overlord in front of his base. But yeah. That's that's that. Here we're just hitting the injects. He hasn't actually connected the uh, the creep spread from his natural to his main, uh, which I would really recommend doing. But to uh, to make up for that, he's actually getting this building wall off right here. Uh, these two evolution chambers, he's going to be using them eventually, as we saw for the double upgrades, and the same with the zero chorn. Uh, getting them this early is slightly inefficient, but it also acts as a wall, so that, that makes up for the lack of efficiency. These spine crawlers here are a reaction to what he sees with his overlords. You can actually see uh, on his vision, he sees a bunch of roaches moving out, he sees a bunch of zerglings. He knows this is a really quick timing attack, so I probably cut drones to do this, which I did, as you can see here. And uh, yeah, so he's just reactively getting spine crawlers, which is really good on his part because you don't want to be just dying. Here's the attack by me, and at this point, it's pretty much over. 
Uh, Harvester-wise, I fell way too far behind, and from there he just took the economic lead, solidified it, and then used it to secure the win. So, yep. You'll see he accidentally went for two queens. Uh, it's kind of preference what you want to do. You can go two, three, four queens. Two queens would be the most economically, like, the most economical. But by getting four queens, you'll be a bit safer against uh, attacks, just because you'll have the transfuse. And you'll also be safer from, from Mutalist Caress later on. But uh, if you're really good with scouting, or, or if you are able to scout your opponent, like my opponent did in this game, just because he has the Overlord Vision, then you really don't need the, uh, the, the extra queens. You can, you can cut them and be perfectly fine, just because you know you're, you're going to be able to defend this attack. And you know, because I invested in the roaches this early, that I'm not, not going to have mutalisks until some, some time in the future. And, uh, yep. Once, once this attack was cleaned up, that was, that was pretty much it. We'll, we'll go through the rest. You'll see, uh, right now, he has 36 harvesters, but he also put down all four of his gases. So basically what this means is he got all four of his gases when he had 40 harvesters and this is because you want to have ideally you want to have 16 drones per mineral line just because each mineral patch um, the ideal saturation you can get on it is two drones and because there are eight min mineral patches in uh, in each base you're going to be having you know eight times two drones which is 16 drones so 16 drones per mineral line and since you have two bases it's going to be 16 times 2 which is 32 drones and then you're also going to need to be taking your gases and you know the gases is you know you're losing four drones there and then you need to actually saturate the gases which is going to be you know three gas three three drones per gas and there's four gases so three times tw four which is going to be 12 drones i know it's it's a lot of math and it's kind of confusing but basically you just want 16 drones per mineral line and then you know, fully saturate the gases because gases are really important, and that that's pretty much where the 40 drone number comes from, or 40 supply, where you're getting you know the two queens, which is two supply each, so 36 drones and then two supply. Um, so you you don't want to be taking the gases too soon because like, for example, if you took the all four gases when you had only 20 drones suddenly you have 16 drones then you have to saturate the gases so you have six you have 12 drones on gas and four drones on minerals which is not where you want to be gas is important but when you have way too much gas overhead like that you're not going to be able to spend your resources and you're just going to end up bottlenecking yourself in terms of uh, in resources and income um, okay here we see our opponent has saturated his gases like we were talking about. We'll see with his first 100 gas, we'll see what, what he goes for. He goes for the, the attack upgrades first. This is pretty smart just because uh, a lot of ZVZ games, you don't really need that layer extremely quickly, especially in this game because he saw the early roaches. He, he knows that I'm not crazy teching to anything you know really quick, so he doesn't really need the scouting information. He knows that you know any burrowed infester or burrowed roach play is going to be delayed, any mutilisk play is going to be delayed, so he can really afford to get these upgrades before the lair. Um, by getting these up double upgrades like this, uh, it's, it's really good because you're taking whatever advantage you had, which is this crazy economic lead, and he's, he's investing that so that he can get even further ahead. So instead of like making a ton of roaches, he's going to get a ton of upgrades and a ton of roaches. So, you know, army-wise, he's going to be uh, a lot better than me. Uh, hitting his injects really well here. And, yep, you'll see with the next 100 gas, he actually goes for lair. You don't want to delay the lair too much. You can go like three hatch before lair, or in this case, two hatchery with a lot of a lot of investments like the double upgrades here. But you you want to get the lair eventually because roach speed is pretty important later on, just in defending your expansions. What what our opponent here did was he actually oversaturates his mineral lines. You can see he has he has uh, much more than he than he wants. Um, like, like I said before, 16 drones per mineral line, but you can see here he has he has 8, 16, and then actually, you know, 6 more here. So he has 6 too many in this line, and 7 too many in this line. 
what this tells me is, or what this means is that he's going to be expanding really soon, and he'll just pull off seven drones from this line, six drones from this line, and then suddenly he only has to make a few more drones to fully saturate this space. And this is what I was talking about before, where the double upgrade or a double expand comes into play. Because he has so many, so much of a drone overhead, he can actually just transfer and fully saturate one base. So he actually needs another base so that he can, you know, if the opportunity arises, he can drone it up and you know get further ahead economically. Uh, by doing this, you have to play a lot more defensive, which is what our opponent here is doing. He has the spine crawlers, he has the wall up, and you know things like that. Uh, he has to play defensive just because by investing so much in drones, you're going to be behind, or you're going to be behind, like army-wise and map control-wise. But you'll also be ahead, or be ahead economically, which is the trade-off in in this situation. Um, another thing to note is. By getting these extra eight drones like he did, it, it, it these aren't like wasted drones in in the sense that if you have more than sixteen drones, uh, that's awkward. Um, yeah, sorry about that. That was my phone. Um, what I what I mean is by if if you have these <laughs> these eight drones here, they're they're going to be mining. And they're not going to be like wasted drones. Um, by by having s two drones per mineral line, they're going to be mining at 100% efficiency. But having that third drone, that third drone is only going to be mining at 33% efficiency. So if a drone takes about a minute and a half to pay for itself, with only two drones per at you know 100% efficiency, which is two drones per mineral patch, then the third drone is going to take about like it's only 33% efficiency. So it's going to be like four minutes, four or more minutes to pay for itself. So it's a huge difference, but it is not like wasted. You know, he is getting some benefit from having these extra drones. And that about wraps it up. Uh, you see he has the economic advantage. He played it really smartly by investing in the upgrades and not being too greedy about it. He played defensive when he had to, and then he just went out for the, the final killer blow when, when, uh, when he felt that was, the time was right. So this has been Michael Spanishwa Yaboot for hotkeyit.com. And uh, there's there's ZVZ Ice Fisher for you. Bye.